What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. 2016 free response question. This number one was an awesome question with some great things that we need to understand. So I wanted to work through it. Essentially, says we have a wooden wheel here with a mass that consists of some spokes. It's going to roll down a hill at some theta above the horizontal. The ramp is going to exert friction, so that's really important. There is going to be friction, which is going to make this object spin but it rolls without slipping, which is great because that means friction is not going to do any work to the system. So for this first one, we're just going to draw a free body diagram, but we're not going to do components. That's really, really important. We're going to use the dotted line as the surface, which is great. Indic indicate what points in the wheel the force is exerted. This part right here, guys, it burned some kids in 2016 because you had to draw the arrows from where the force was exerted. The lengths did not indicate the magnitude, so that's okay. The first one, the most obvious one, from the center of mass straight downward, the force due to gravity is exerted on this wheel. The next force acts at the surface, and it points up the incline. This is what's going to create the torque, which is going to make this object spin. This is the force of friction, and it happens right at the contact point. And the last force that happens right at the contact point that goes perpendicular to the surface is the force of the normal. Now, I know a lot of times, guys, we'll draw the force of the normal from the center of an object because the force of the normal happens at the surface. It is a force that the surface puts on an object, so it also happens at the contact point. So for this not the components, guys, we're not going to draw FG parallel down the incline, which is a component of the weight, and we're also not going to draw the perpendicular component of the weight either. As the wheel rolls down the four, uh, ramp, which force causes the angular velocity? And like I said, angular velocity is, guys, caused by a torque, which happens at some r perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So this friction force is what's going to push the outside, create a torque, which is going to make the wheel spin this one. So this is going to be the force of friction because it acts at some r away from the axis of rotation. Part B, for this ramp angle, the force is exerted on the wheel that is less than the maximum possible static friction force. Instead, the maximum force of friction exerted on the wheel is 40% of the maximum force or force component directed opposite to the force of friction. Derive an expression for the linear acceleration of the wheel's center of mass in terms of m, theta, and any other physical constants as appropriate. Okay, so I'm going to draw in here, not the free body diagram, I'm just going to draw what's going on that makes this thing accelerate. One thing that makes this thing accelerate is going to be FG parallel. And we know that FG parallel is MG sine theta. But it says the force of friction acting is 40% of that. So it's really 0.4 times FG parallel. So if I look at the acceleration of a system, which just is equal to F net over M total, I see that the F net is really FG parallel minus FG parallel 40% of that divided by the M of the wheel. So I can clean that up and say Mg sine theta minus 0.4 times Mg sine theta all over M. The M's cancel. I could factor out a G sine theta. So I have G sine theta 1 minus 0.4. So I get an expression now for the acceleration to just be 0.6 g sine theta. Quick note, you would not substitute in for g. It says to leave it in terms of physical constants, so you would not sub in for g. For part C, in the second example, we switch out for a block of ice and not a wheel that has the same mass. It's released from the same instant it's released, like I said, everything's the same with the exception of there being negligible friction. And this is an idea and a topic that they're going to test every single year on the AP exam. When you look at two objects that come down inclines, if you have a wheel that's going to be spinning and you have a block with no friction, this one is always going to get down here faster. That is something they want you to know and they are going to test every single year. And how do we know? Well, with that lack of friction, we know that for the first example, we had F net was equal to the FG parallel minus FG parallel 40%. But for the block, F net is just going to be equal to FG parallel. So this has a bigger F net. 
Therefore, it has a bigger A. And a bigger A means a greater change in speed. So this object, the block, is going to be moving faster. You need to know that it's going to be tested every single year. If I look at it in terms of energy, initially we both have gravitational potential energy, which is equal. But for the wheel, it's going to be converted into kinetic energy linear plus the kinetic energy rotational. So at the bottom, it's going to have less linear kinetic energy because here, all I'm doing is kinetic energy linear because there's no rotation of the block. So this is going to have a greater kinetic energy. This question is short and sweet, but it's really, really important to understand all the things going on here. It's something they test every single year. If you have any questions about this question, just leave it down in the comments below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you on the next one.